You can do all these but quit. <coughs> Again, Miss Exuberant, how you doing? Just felt this quick pop up on the inside. Oh. You can do all things but Good morning. How are you guys doing? It is Saturday morning. Um Just had something I wanted to share with you. Something hopefully to help you on your journey. It is October. Oh my goodness, I got to change this little calendar. I'm working on getting um, a weight, weight machine in here so I can lift some weights. Um, I found one, a used one that I might be able to get free. I don't know. I'm going to try. But then I was thinking about buying a bowl flex. That's going to be about $1,500. But I'll pay it. I, I'd pay for it. But um, so I'm going to check out this free one. See what's up with that, maybe. But hey, free is free. You know what I'm saying? So listen. This is a thought that I... Uh, a beautiful thought. That I was... I'm sitting here at my computer. <clears throat> Excuse me. I always feel better after I work out. Oh. I mean, always. There's not one time that I don't work out, that I don't feel better afterwards. I do a lot of my processing, talking to God when I work out, so... For me, it is, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's essential. It's, it's medicine. For me, working out is medicine for my mind. It helps me so much more than what I can, um, articulate, I guess. Do you work out? Do y'all work out? I walk a lot. I ran for five. Well, I ran for about, I'd say, maybe 10, maybe 12 minutes off and on. I did five minutes. Then I do a minute here. Then I ran a, just about maybe 10 minutes all together, which was pretty good. It's been a long time since I ran. So tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to work out again. Oh, come on. My computer's acting. Um, having a moment. Anyway, <clears throat> to get to what I wanted to chat about really quick, I wanted to put on some music. But let me get to what I wanted to chat about while my computer is trying to decide on what it wants to do. Um, we, and I say we because it's all of us. Remind me in three days. Yes, remind me in three days. Thank you. We... The journey, the journey of a lifetime. The journey of a lifetime. So there's two. I would say in this order. Number one. But the but one and two kind of go together, I guess. Maybe. Just think about it. The journey. Yeah, mm-hmm. 
The journey of a lifetime is the journey with your relationship with your Father God. Number one. Number two is is akin to that. The journey to authenticity. If you don't have number one, you can't get to number two. Ain't that good? Are you, are you that queen? Who 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 did this kind? Most listen when I when I do the lives. It, it's just it, this is this, these are my thought processes. You can't have number two without number one because he's the only one who really knows who you are. Every other journey outside of that one will lead you to a place called fake. So your journey with your relationship with your father God in spirit and in truth is the journey to get to your authenticity is the journey to get to who you really are because he's the only one who really knows who you are. What is that? Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed you, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. He's the only one that has the key to who you are. He's the only one. Every other journey is that will lead you to fake. What about abortion? What about it? He still knows every child that didn't have the opportunity to live because of abortion. Now you repent get into right fellowship with father he forgives he really forgives he forgives and he already knew and he already made provision for everything that we will ever do even if we aborted a child he's not holding it against you He's not. So you can't hold it against yourself if he's not holding it against you. And he already knew. He did. But the journey to authenticity cannot be taken without him. The journey to authenticity cannot be taken without him. As a matter of fact, Miss 
Miss Queen Exuberant, my destiny sister. Uh, she was, we were, we were talking about forgiveness. She was sharing some things about forgiveness. And that's the first step. And this is something really beautiful that we got to understand. He knows everything about us. He knows everything about us. There's not one thing that we have ever done or that we ever will do that he does not already know. Can you take a deep breath on that? And in this season, I really believe that the enemy is banking on people not knowing who they are. Not only that, people that don't know who they are, but that don't know who he is. Remember that, Miss Exuberant? Not knowing who you are and not knowing who he is. So this is very interesting. You are not your title. I'm going to say that. You need to say that I am not my titles. I am not my titles. I have, have, I have the assignment as a mother. But a mother is not my identity. I have the assignment as a wife. But a wife is not my identity. I had the assignment as an employee. But being an employee is not my identity. I have the assignment as a minister. But a minister is not my identity. I am not my identity titles. You might have the assignment as a father, but a father is not your identity. We have a father. Jesus said, our father, that is his identity. He identifies as a father. He is father. He is Abba. Now this is it. If we don't understand that we are not our identity. When the people. Who we have ascribed our identity to. No longer wants us to identify as that. We are left destitute. This is what I mean. This is good. For parents who have issues letting go of their children and letting their children become adults, when your child no longer wants to be a child and begin to reject your parenting. If you took a parent as your identity, you will be left destitute because you are no longer needed for that job. With my hands when I need them. Is this making sense? So if you take on being a parent as your identity and your child no longer wants you to parent over them and they reject your parenting, you're left destitute because you no longer play that role in that office. 
This is my home office. <laughs> but you're no longer in that place. You can't be in that place. You, you're not assigned to mama forever. You're not assigned to be their mama forever. There has to come a time of transition into being a parent of an adult child and not being somebody's mama. Because they don't want you to mama them anymore. So if I took my role as a mama forever, when this boy who's now an adult wants to make decisions... That mama don't agree with and I interject my mama in on him. He's going to reject it. Why? I'm no longer his mama. I am his mother. I am his parent. I am the parent of an adult child. I'm a parent of an adult. Because that was my identity. Not just my assignment. So what? So the enemy is banking on people not knowing who they are. The enemy is banking on people taking their roles as their identity. Hear me. You went to school for a particular assignment to work as a nurse. Your identity isn't a nurse. You're not a nurse. You identify as a nurse as a work assignment. Does that make sense? You do the assignment as an employee. That isn't your identity. I remember my husband went to went through a horrible, horrible situation with a, a job some years ago. A job that he engrafted himself as his identity. And guess what? The powers that be took his job away. And he was destitute. He was devastated. Now I'm not talking about there's a grieving process that goes along with something that you... But he gave his life to it. It became his identity. Then when they took it, He said, who am I without this? I said, that's what you did. That's not who you are. So developing your authenticity outside of what you do is a must. You must know who you are outside of what you do. Because when you cannot do what you do and what you have ascribed to as being your identity and it's taken from you, it's going to devastate you because you planted yourself in that thing and you said, this is me. Can you take a deep breath right there? So who are you outside of your title? Who else? Who are you outside of all of the roles that you play? Father, people, the roles that you play have to do with other people. Who are you sitting by yourself alone without you doing anything? I went through this season when I came into the home that I'm in, church, home that I that I'm in. And the Lord wanted me to sit a year without doing anything. So I said, yes, Lord. You know, in that moment of euphoria with Holy Spirit, you're like, yes, Lord, yes. So I went into this new home and he told me not to do anything. 
See, the place that I came from, I ascribe my identity to the things that I did. I was. I am. I was a praise and worship leader. I was a minister. I was the greeter and the hospitality leader. I was. And then when I came over to my new home, daddy told me, now I need you to sit down and learn to be. I said, what? Yes. So month number one went by and I was like, ah, this is wonderful. I just come and hear the word. Okay. Month number two. This is wonderful. I uh, Month number three, I started nitpicking. Why, why, why are they singing those songs like that? And why this, that, and the other? And Dad would just say, "Shh, I need you to be." I was like, "Be? I don't understand." Then in one day, they were singing worship, and I was trying to sing loud and out sing them. And the Lord, the Lord said, shh. He said, let me sing over you. I said, wow. So many things happened in a three-month period. I lost, I had to change jobs. My husband's mother passed away, so he was totally emotionally unavailable. And I left the church where I had been at for 12 years. And my head was spinning. I couldn't run to the church house and do my identity to make me feel all right, to make me feel safe, because dad told me to sit down. Month number five, month number six, honey, I got anxious and I got mad. And I tried to do this and that, little nitpicky things around the church. And my apostles would catch me and say, oh no, we have ushers for that. You can just leave. You mean I can't pick a paper off the floor? That's what I said within myself because I got mad. I mean, I was gifted and talented and I could do all of these things. Can I do the church programs? There's, there must be something that I can do because I was trying to find my identity in something. But dad said, no, I just need you to, I just need you to sit down. So at the pinnacle, see, because what he was really doing is he was dealing with rejection. Because I thought if I did enough, I wouldn't be rejected. So he was dealing with deeply rooted rejection. Can you do nothing and know that you're accepted? Honey, month number, and month number nine rolled around, month number 10, I was a hot mess. And I was laying on my bed. And I said, God, I don't know who I am. He said, I know. And that's what I'm dealing with. He said, I got to get you to understand. And this actually happened. I was in my bedroom. I was getting ready to go to bed. I had undressed and I was standing there in the dark and I was crying. <sighs> and he said, I got to get you to know. Standing in your bedroom, butt naked, with the lights off, you are absolutely, utterly accepted without you doing a thing. 
that is authenticity. And I cry. And it, in this vision, I was laying on the bed and tears flowing down into my ears and I'm just crying. And it's like I saw in a vision me walking out to the edge of this huge chasm, like the Grand Canyon. And you're looking out over this huge gaping hole. And for me, that was what the chasm of rejection looked like. Like the Grand Canyon, there isn't enough works to fill it. And I was standing there and tears are just flowing. And I'm like, God. I said, I'm done. I am done. I don't know how to fill this hole in my heart that looks like the Grand Canyon. That's what works do. You're trying to fill up a space. That's what all of these false identities do. You're trying to be somebody's mama. So you can feel fulfilled. You're trying to be a good employee. So you can feel. F-E-E-L. Fulfilled. You're trying to be a good minister. So you can feel fulfilled. You're trying to feel this chasm, this Grand Canyon called rejection. And I said, God, I can't, I, I, I said, I'm done. And he said, now I want you to turn around, turn aside. Now I want you to turn around. And I felt myself turning around from it. And he said, now, this time, when you walk. He said, don't walk looking around at people. Because you'll never, it says, oh my goodness, where's my word? There's a scripture. Let me find the scripture. Listen to this. Let me find it in another translation. No, this is good. Listen to this. This is Proverbs 30 and 15. The leech has two daughters. Give and give, they cry. There are three things that are never satisfied. And four never says enough. Listen, the grave, the barren womb, the land which the land which is never satisfied with water, and fire which never says enough. I'm gonna read that again. It says the leech has two daughters. One name give, and the other name is give. They cry. There are three things that are never satisfied. Four that never says enough. The grave is never full. <sighs> so people are going to die. Listen. 
If you find your identity in people, and when those people leave, I'm not talking about the natural grieving process. I'm talking about something demonic and something diabolical by the enemy that if we plant our identity in a person and that person leaves, everybody dies. Even I'm going to die one day. And I told my son, I have to teach you to live without me because I'm going to die one day. Yeah. Listen, the barren womb, you will never have enough children to feel rejection. You cannot make your kids stay kids. To make you feel accepted. Listen. The land. Which is never satisfied with water. We will always have fires. Because the land will always be dry. Because there can never be enough water. To fall from the heavens. To fill the parched land. And the fire will always burn. There will always be something to burn. You will never do enough to feel accepted. And that's what Father was telling me. He said, that's why I, I got to get you to be quiet for a year. Sit down and do nothing so I can show you how much I love you and that my love is not determined by what you do for me. He told me one time, he said, Lacey, you cannot give enough to me to make me love you more than I love you right now. He said, you cannot, you can't read your word enough to make you love me more than I love you right now. He said, I love you so much that while you were a sinner, I died for you. And he says, I don't need your works. I want your heart. He says, Zuber said that this morning. He don't need our works. He wants our heart. Because we want him. Because we need him. And he says, when you do, I'll show you. But I know about you. Before I formed you, I knew you. He said, I will show you what I know about you. Not what your mama know. Not what your teachers have said. Or your friends. Or your BF Ephesus. None of that. Not even your limited capacity of who you think you are. He said, I'll show you what I know about you. And that will satisfy you. And then you won't be looking for your identity in other people and things and in your titles. He said you won't look for your identity in your children. And you can let them grow up and be who I called them to be. You won't be looking for your identity in your job. Because I'll show you who you are. And he said, I will give you a job. I'll show you your purpose. God ain't about us working. He's about us being. In him I live. I move. 
and have my, not have my working, but in him I, I live, I move, and I have my being. The world wants us to work. God wants us to be. So who are you outside of all of your titles, outside of all of the stuff that you're getting ready to get up and run around this weekend and do? Do you know who you are without you doing anything for anybody? Can you just sit and be? Instead, I got to do this and 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 this. And they want me to take them there and there and there to fill up the chasm. That can never be filled. To fill up the grave that can never be filled. To fill up the barren womb that can never be filled. And to hear him say, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus hadn't did a thing. And he was pleased because he was his son. He's pleased because you are his son. He's pleased because you belong to him. And he wants us to move in purpose. Not with these unrealistic expectations that we have. Like my sister that just talked about a little bit ago about abortion. He knows. And there's forgiveness for that. And there's mercy and there's grace. And there is a set of arms that's still open. That's saying, come home. Come home so you can be who he's always called us to be. Without doing. So I just want you to be. I want you to be free. I want you to be whole. I want you to know that you're loved. And you're being loved. But the world system wants us to work. and at the, By the sweat of our brow. With unrealistic expectations. And when you no longer have the right to say no, you are a slave. And not a son. Sons can say no. It hurts the father's heart. But he says, I'm not going to keep you against your will. Just like the prodigal son. He told his father, give me what you owe me. Give me, give me what belongs to me. And he did. The father didn't try to keep him there. He didn't try to convince him. He didn't tell him all the reasons and what was going to happen if he did, if he left. The father said, okay. And when the son came to himself, he said, I'm going to go back to my father's house. Not to that man's house. I'm going to go to my father's house. And he said, if I have to, I'll be a servant. I just want to get back in the house. But the father was waiting. He knew my son is going to remember. And he did. And the father was waiting. And he ran. Um,
This is interesting. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is so interesting. I'm going to have to remember this. It said nothing. About when the son left. That he had a robe and a ring when he left. He was an orphan when he left. But when he came to himself. I seen it no more. When he realized his authentic self. He came. To himself. Said they also animals. We gotta come to ourselves. And he went home. The robe and the ring is for sons. Not orphans. He didn't take the robe in the ring when he left. The father didn't give him the robe in the ring when he left because he was an orphan. But when he came to himself and he woke up, and he said, what am I doing here? I don't belong here. You don't belong in rejection. You don't belong in depression. You don't belong in anxiety. You don't belong in fear. Don't eat it anymore. You don't belong there. Come to yourself. Yeah. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. Self. I said, I gotta go home. I gotta go home. I gotta go home. This isn't where I belong. I gotta go home. I gotta go home. You're not, you don't eat, listen, don't eat the husk that the pigs are eating. Don't eat the husk that those who don't know fathers eating. Don't eat the husk of rejection, of abandonment, of loneliness. Don't eat the husk of addictions. That's not where you belong. Go home. Go home. Come to yourself. Come to yourself and go home. His father's waiting to meet you. Yeah. And he gave him the robe and the ring. Because he knew. Now he knows who he is. We're not going to get the robe and the ring until we know who we are. The robe of righteousness. I know I'm right in Jesus. I know I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. The robe of righteousness and he puts it on us. We don't have to put it on. He puts it on us. He said, put the robe on and put the ring on. The signet ring. The ring that belongs to sons. He said, put it on him. And let's have a party. Because my son that was dead is alive. So who are you without all of your titles? 
Who are you without being a mother? When your kids grow up and move away, who are you? When you're no longer working, or the job lets you go, who are you? When you're no longer a wife or a husband, and it's you standing in the middle of your bedroom, butt naked, in the pitch black. And nobody's there. But you, your identity, and your father. Who are you? And ain't nobody calling your name. You are completely accepted. You are completely accepted. Not one part of you is rejected. God, we thank you. Help us as we continue on this road. Call authenticity without labels and titles. without falsehood, mask, faking. Psalms 51 and 6, he desires truth. You can tell him you're afraid because he already knows. But he don't want you to live in fear. Tell him so he can settle your heart. Dad, I'm afraid. So that's why I wrote 365 notes in my word. Because I know there will be times when you will be afraid. But I'm with you. So you don't have to live in it. Okay, Dad? <sighs> Let's go. He knows you're going to be times when you're lonely. That's why he wrote so many love notes to let you know I'm with you always. So you don't have to live in it. I'm lonely, Dad. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him. Tell him the truth. Come to yourself and tell him the truth. I'm sad. I'm depressed. I feel a little anxious. I know. I know you do. (sighs) But I told you not to be. You can pray. You can cast your cares on me. I can carry it. I care for you. I know. (sighs) Okay. Let's go. 
All right. What else? I don't know how things are going to work out. I know. But I told you I'm your provider. That I'm your gyro. You never have to beg a day in your life. I got you. Okay, Dad. Who are you? I'm a son. Thank you for teaching us about sonship. God, I pray for every one of my brothers and sisters. I don't know where they are. Or what they're going through. But I do know you desire truth. So teach us how to be truthful with you. And tell you the truth. About who we are. About what we're going through and how we feel. We can't fake it with you. You already know. Help us to accept what you've already said about us and what you already know about us. You said before you formed us in the womb, you knew us. Help us to accept what you know about us. Help us to let go of every false and every fake identity. Help us understand that these are assignments, not identities. And that we do our assignment as well as possible. But they're not our identity. They're not who we are. I have the assignment as a mother, but being a mother is not my identity. I am a son of God. I'm a daughter of the King. Help every last one of my brothers and sisters begin to discover who you called us to be. Help us to come to ourselves, God. Every day. Help us to stay in that place of awareness. We are not what we do. We are not what the world has said. But we are who you say that we are. Help us to hold our heads up high as we begin to walk in our identity as sons. I pray for the healing of your hurts. I pray for the healing of rejection and abandonment. I pray for the healing of false identities and lies that's been put on you by the enemy. False responsibility. It is not our responsibility to govern how other people think. But help us to show them the love of the Father so we can point them to the Father. You are the only one who can tell us who we really are. Our authentic self. Thank you, Lord. I take off every mask.
to be who you really called me to be. Just make time to sit in his presence and just let him love all of the fear out. Get into his words so he can solidify his voice in you so you'll know when he's talking and when he's not. You guys have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful day in Father, and I'll talk to you again soon.